Hi, in this video, we do smoke photography. Hi, I'm Adam, and welcome to First Man Photography, the channel that will help you take your photography to the next level. If you haven't done so yet, please do follow me on Instagram. It's a great place to share your work, look at each other's work, and there's also some great conversation going on there. I'll put a link down below, and I'll see you there. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, so smoke photography is a fun and abstract area of photography where you're just capturing light traveling through smoke that really creates some nice abstract images. To create these images, it's actually pretty simple. You only need a few bits of gear that you probably already have lying around your studio or your home. So let's just go through some of the things that we're gonna need. So first and foremost, what you're gonna need is a camera. It doesn't have to be an expensive camera or anything particularly special, but if it has the ability to fire an external flash, then that will help you. Next is a flash, obviously, that you're going to need because it's that that's going to be lighting the smoke and something to create the smoke. You can use matches, a candle, just blow them out and it'll create lots of nice smoke. I'm using these sandalwood incense sticks. They don't smell particularly good, but they'll create smoke on a constant basis. So they're pretty good. You're also going to need a desk lamp like this, and I will reveal what that is for in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna get the studio set up and we'll go through what we need to do. Right, so we're set up, the studio's ready. So let's just go through the gear and how we are using it. So first off, we have the incense stick burning, and it's that that is producing the smoke, as you can see there. What the lamp is for is just to help us focus on the smoke and that's just lighting the smoke up so the camera has something to focus on. If I just turn this off quickly, you can really see the difference that it makes when we don't have that light. So that's without the light and that's with the light and that's gonna make it just much easier for the camera to focus on that smoke. Next, we have the flash over there. That is coming across the smoke and it's gonna light it, the smoke th coming through it from the side and that gives it that really nice effect. What I don't want though is I don't want it light in the background because we want that to be nice and black which is what this background here provides. It's just a very cheap pop-up background that you can find on Amazon and also it stops the light going into the camera from the flash as well. That is a Lastalite Strobo barn door. You can use much cheaper options just like a piece of cardboard sellotaped or using an elastic band sellotaped to the flash. Now the flash has been triggered by these fairly cheap wireless flash triggers. They can be picked up for around 30 to 50 pounds on Amazon as well. You can pay much, much more, but I think these days, these do the trick. They do the trick for speed lights like this and for much bigger studio flash setups. So these are a pretty good buy. Next, we need to talk a little bit about settings. Because we're using flash, you want your shutter speed to be the sync speed of the flash and the camera. So in this case, it's one, 200th of a second with Canon 5D Mark IV. You can go a little bit less if you want to, but I just generally stick at the flash sync speed. It makes it easy to remember and quicker to get set up. Aperture, I'm using f11. f8 or f11 is gonna work for you and get those nice sharp images with a little bit extra depth of field as well, so you're not losing focus in some of the smoke. I have ISO set at 100 and the flash power on the flash is one fourth power. That's gonna be different if for your setup. You're just gonna need, gonna need to experiment a bit with your exposure because if the flash is further away, then you're gonna need a higher power. But you can also control that just by upping your ISO a little bit to one two, to ISO 200 or 320, something like that. And you have that little bit of control on your camera with the ISO. So the next thing is the smoke coming off the incense stick there because if you have no wind or no movement in the room of air, it's gonna be going straight up. And these are not really gonna produce very interesting images. So when before you take your shot, you can just waft the smoke a little bit to get that movement in it. Or if you really want something much more dramatic, just give it a little blow and it'll stop and then it'll start rising up again and creating some interesting shapes for you to capture. When you're shooting the smoke, you don't need to shoot it straight all the time. Try different angles to get the interest and produce different looking results. Just pr experiment, practice, do lots of different things and you'll come up with some really artistic shots. Right, let's have a little go. I'm gonna get down and take a few shots. 
There's no need to use a tripod here either. You can do if you want to, but here I'm just gonna hand hold it and capture those shots that way. So I'm gonna get down and take some shots. Okay, so I just wanna get down nice and low to the level of the smoke and with it lit from the lamp. So I just need to focus on the smoke as it's rising up from the incense stick and then just take the shot and just experiment with lots of different things. I'm gonna check the back of my screen for exposure. I can increase the flash power. I can also just increase the ISO a little bit to get that right and then just try lots of different things. So let's just try taking a few shots. Try wafting the smoke a little bit, lots of different things like I've been saying. I'm just gonna shoot a few more. Okay, so they're looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do now though is try attaching the macro lens, just get a bit closer into that smoke and see if I can come up with something a little bit more abstract. Okay, so macro lens is on, let's take a few more. That's looking good as well. I'm gonna flick back, try a few more, get a wide, slightly wider angle shot and just try a few more things. It's fun, just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting until you've got a good selection for later on. So it's actually really that simple. Just have a little play around, try different things and experiment a little bit till you've got a nice number of shots in the camera and then we're gonna put them back into the computer and do a little bit of post-processing. So let's go back to the desk. And I'll just talk very briefly about post-processing. Okay, so once we've got the images into the computer, I like to do most of my processing in Adobe Lightroom. You have lots of control over these images, but I like to maintain that black background to really make these images pop and feel really unique and special. A couple of tips I can give you though, is you have loads of control over the color, similar to my water drop shots. You can use the temperature slider, the tint slider, like that to bring out that nice green color. And you can also go down to the hue here and change the color that way as well with the slider there. You've got so much control over the color and what you can also do, as long as you maintain that black background, is open it up in Adobe Photoshop. And so we just go edit in, open in Photoshop. That image will then shift over into Photoshop. And then once we're in Photoshop, you can really change how the image looks just by going Command or Control I, and that will invert the image to just to give you a really different type of feel. You can then play around with the color here just by going to the hue saturation panel, change things there, increase saturation. You can add a gradient in as well. If you click on here, just add a gradient in across there and you can change the color that way just to bring in an extra bit of image. So we've got purple in the top left, blue in the bottom, and you can see how that works and creates different images. Use the levels panel as well, just to bring out that proper white and you have lots of control that way as well. Loads of stuff you can do, save that and then it goes back into Lightroom and you can export your images from there. Exciting area of photography, just a bit of fun, creates these nice abstract images, but I think you're gonna have some fun with that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you've tried it, are you gonna try it? And I'd love to see some of the images you create over on Instagram. If you haven't done so yet, please also subscribe to the channel. There's videos going up every Wednesday and every Sunday, and I really think you will enjoy some of the content. I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out.